whatever you see us for the past since January, February, March, one program or the other, December camp program was seven days with you. Six days or so, seven days. Six nights. We enter again, March, another one. And those who came across us within that period, amen, for the first time, all they have been able to know this church for, from that time till now, now prayer and prophecy, prayer and prophecy. Listen, we are fishermen in this church. All that one is our own way of catching fish. This church, what our identity is, is not prayer. It's not a, 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 what do you call it? Prophecy, healing, water ministration, family deliverance. No, that is not what we are known for. Hey, it is to make you come, confess, confess. When I don't come, it's time to hear something. Enter message pastors. They are wondering, how are we able to have large followership like this? You cannot go with a naked hook to go and catch a fish. I am a fisherman. And I am out to catch big, big, big fish. Not small, small, small fish. Big, big, big one. Where you don't say when you catch, you don't say you don't catch a fish. And contrary to the denominations, a big fish is not a millionaire in the church. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. A big fish is a predestinated seed of God whose name is in the book of life from the foundation of the world. Every time for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, there's a church that is going for crusade. Every time, crusade here, crusade here, crusade here, crusade here. Every week crusade is somewhere. Every week crusade. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there are members that are in that church and they know nothing beyond their church. Their church. Their church. Their church. Their pastor. Their church. Their pastor. Until they have idolized their church. Until they believe that salvation even comes by their church. Praise the Lord. I want to say some things this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to say some things this morning. Pick your Bibles. To Hebrew chapter 6. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Listen very well. The angel of the Lord told Brother Abraham how to catch fish. And he told him that he uses three, a, a, a good fisherman. We pull the hook from the water three times and I preached on the message that I told the third pool amen I want to drop something that whatever you see us for the past since January February March one program or the other December camp program was seven days with you. Six days or so. Seven days. Six nights. We enter again. March. Another one. 
And those who came across us within that period, amen, for the first time, all they have been able to know this church for, from that time till now, now prayer and prophecy, prayer and prophecy. Listen, we are fishermen in this church. All that one is our own way of catching fish. It was to attract you to come here. This church, what our identity is, is not prayer. It's not a, 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 what do you call it? Prophecy, healing, water ministration, family deliverance. No, that is not what we are known for. Hey, it is to make you come, confess, confess. When I don't come, it's time to hear something. message pastors they are wondering how are we able to have large followership like this you cannot go with a naked hook to go and catch a fish I am a fisherman and I am out to catch big 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 fish not small 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 fish big 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 one where you don't say when you catch you don't say you don't catch a fish and contrary to the denominations, a big fish is not a millionaire in the church. No, 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 no. Hallelujah. A big fish is a predestinated seed of God whose name is in the book of life from the foundation of the world. And God's very elect, they are not easy to catch. You cannot get them by miracle. You cannot get them by any gift. I have told enter message preachers. Go and learn how to catch fish. You come and people gather and begin to tell them about serpent seed. You begin to tell them that the Pope of Rome is Antichrist. A Catholic person coming, you are telling him that. He will go and never come back to you again. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Listen, church. If you are a minister, you are hearing me now from wherever you are hearing me. Listen. If your church is just a, a, a church of miracles, signs, and wonders, prayer, 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 your church will be like a hospital. Hospital, anybody permanent address? Eh? Does anybody permanently stay in a hospital? When do you remember hospital? When you are sick. Now, I want to begin to have members now. I want to add now to the church. There are some of them where just they come for our prayer program only. There are some of them where they come for only healing, deliverance. They come here to look for prophet. They will hear me now. And they will come and they will never go back to the denomination again. <laughs> Hebrew chapter 6. Hebrew chapter 6. Let me read the first three verses. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. To that church. Therefore, having the, uh, living the principles of of the doctrine of Christ. Let us go on unto perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith towards God. Of the doctrine of baptisms and of laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. What he's saying is every time you gather we are talking about water baptism in the name of Jesus. Anytime we gather about resurrection, the hope of resurrection, the hope of resurrection, because there was a group that did not believe in resurrection, another group believed in resurrection, Sadducees and Pharisees. 
Let us not lay again the foundation of repentance. Every time we come here, we are talking about fornicators, liars, gossips. Don't do all these uh, 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 things. Repent from this. Repent from that. Dead works, carnality. Every time we come, keep talking about it. I will lay hand, and this will happen. And all the things. They are basic rudiments. He said, it is now time that we go unto perfection. We should move forward. Listen, church. Why does he say that? This Bible is divided into three for the purpose of salvation. Number one is that it is divided first the Gospels. The Gospels there is the good news. The activities of Jesus Christ. How salvation came about. And we have them in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They call them the Synoptic Gospel. They are the Gospel. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Just believe. Live in your heart. Confess in your mouth. He that believes and is baptized. This and that. All oh, those are the Gospel. And we thank God for them. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we have the doctrines. In between, praise the Lord. In between the gospel and the doctrines, we have the acts of apostles. And actually, like William Branham tried to emphasize, he said that it is wrong to call it the acts of the apostles. He said it was actually the acts of the Holy Ghost in the apostles. Because all those miracles, signs and wonders and all the activities, the demonstration of the power, he said, ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come. So, so the gospel, the, the acts of apostle was to confirm the reality of the gospel. There is a power behind it. Jesus Christ had promised them go into the world and preach to all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And he said, and lo, I, I am with you always, even to the end. Now he has gone away. How will they know that he's with them through the acts of the Holy Ghost? Silver and gold are get beautiful, have I none? But such as I have, rise and walk. And there was confusion in the camp of the Pharisees and Sadducees. How come? And quickly, Peter and the rest told them, This thing that happened to this man came by that name of Jesus, whom you crucified. That Jesus is the one doing that. He's alive. He's not dead. So, in between the gospel, amen, and the doctrines, we have the acts of the Holy Ghost to confirm the reality of the gospel. Anybody preaching the gospel, and there are no signs and wonders following, you are not preaching the gospel. The signs and the wonders are to confirm the reality of salvation. These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name, they will cast out devils. They will speak in Newton. They will take any deadly thing shall not hurt them. They will take up serpents. Shall not... So all these signs and wonders, all this speaking in tongues, all these manifestations of the spirit, they are to confirm the reality of the gospel. Then, then we have the doctrines. After you have believed and you have come from the book of Romans, up to the last book of Jude. It is the doctrine. What is the doctrine? Doctrine is how to behave now that you are a Christian. How we behave in our kingdom. How we relate with one another. How we take communion service. How we should show love for one another. How we should forgive one another. And how we should endure temptations and trials. How we should comport ourselves. How we should operate the gifts of the spirit. How the house of the gospel. The house of the kingdom. How we should do things is called the doctrine. And the third part is the mysteries. The mysteries. The mysteries. The mystery there. Amen. 
Blessed be the name of the Lord. The mystery there is to understand God's plan. To understand God's agenda. To understand his plan for salvation. And it is a mystery because God's plan for salvation is hidden. It's not revealed to all. It's revealed only to the elect. And that is why what we are preaching, what we are trying to look at from now on is the divine agenda. The divine agenda. In the divine agenda is the divine timetable. But there has to be an agenda before there is a time for the agenda. Time allocated. Praise the Lord. And let me tell you what we are preaching. You will not find it in any bookshop. You don't find it in any bookshop. As I sat down to put these things together, after I was able to put it together like this, I was getting excited. And when I, my wife came to the table where I was studying, and I, she saw me shouting. I said, do you know why I'm excited? I said, I, say, I know I'm gifted. I said, it is one thing to know it. It's another to arrange it together and then be able to present it. When I saw the way I put down my sermon notes and how these things were coming and I was putting them down because I didn't go and pick them from any book. They are scattered everywhere in the Bible. And then God is able to allow us come and line them up chronologically like that. It's exciting to see that God grants you that understanding. You will not find it in any bookshop. Why? Because it is for the bride. <laughs> Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a mystery. Mystery. God's plan. Can we read some scriptures? This is what Apostle Paul put it. So that you you agree with me? Romans chapter 16. In Romans chapter 16. Let's just see how Apostle Paul put it. Now, now the, 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 the last chapter of Romans 16 and verse 25 and verse 26. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery. Somebody shout the mystery. That's my emphasis. Shout the mystery. He said the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. There is a mystery that has been kept secret since the world began. But now it's made manifest and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the commandments of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of faith. The mystery Hidden from the foundation of the world. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. This is the way Apostle Paul put it from verse 6. He said, How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse, I mean chapter 2, sorry, verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom is hidden. Which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But as it is written, I has not seen, nor ear had. Neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for them that love him. But God has revealed them unto us by his spirit. For the spirit searched all things here, the deep things of God. Go to 1 Timothy chapter 3. We all know that scripture, but just for the purpose of emphasis. Now 1 Timothy chapter 3. This is the way Apostle Paul put it. Verse 16. He said, And without controversy, great is the mystery, mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, preached unto the Gentiles, 
believed on in the world received up into glory. What is trying to tell us? A serious mystery. Had they known it, they would not have crucified. When they were crucifying Jesus Christ, they did not know that they were crucifying the creator of the heavens and the earth. It's a mystery. Why is it a mystery? The God that is so big until in heaven is his throne and the earth is his footstool. The creator of the heavens, the universe, the galaxies. The God that is, 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 is so big, he says, nobody can see me and live. But here he was on earth. Here people didn't know him. He's coming and going there for is a mystery. And Apostle Paul said, without controversy, God was manifested in the flesh. For God to come in flesh is a mystery. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 speaks of another mystery. Apostle Paul spoke about the mystery of godliness. How God came to earth here. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he mentioned again in verse 7, where he says, For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now let her will let until he be taken out of the way. So there's another mystery. It's a mystery of iniquity. Anything that is a mystery, it means the knowledge of it is hidden by God himself. Unless he exposes it and reveals it to you, you will never know it. And there are people that are following Jesus Christ and the deep things of God, they know nothing about it. And that's why those of us who by God's grace, he has opened our eyes. When we try to listen to some of these well-renowned preachers, we crowd the following. Always, we try to say, uh, if crowd are following like that, then maybe the man is saying something. We have tried to listen to them. I am not saying it out of pride. I am saying it, you know, as a fact. Listen to them very well. You will notice they are saying nothing. Nothing to you because you have no far, far, far beyond that. By his grace, though. Far, far, far beyond that. When they pick certain scriptures that you already know the exact interpretation, the mystery of that scripture, and they begin to, 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 to dance around it, something agitates you. Say, no, no, what's this man saying concerning this scripture? Amen. Well, I'm baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. There are three that bear witness. Let us make man in our image, you see. So there are three. Trinity. Co-equal. Co-this. Co-this. And the blind followers, they are nodding their head. Kai, our geo, no Bible. While you are looking at it, say, this man knows nothing. But it's my God's grace. Why? Matthew chapter 13. You know, it's a teaching, so that's why I'm taking time. It's not as if you don't know these scriptures, but... Somebody else may be listening who has not read them before. Verse 10. After he has spoken the parable of the soils. Amen. Some fell here, some fell there, some fell there. He went to the crusade. All that he was doing was preaching to a crowd. See Jesus. Oh, see Jesus. The people believe who are unable to know the depth of John 3.16. That scripture says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believers should not perish. And some preachers believe that salvation is for everybody. If salvation is for everybody, then why would Jesus come to the crowd and begin to teach them in parables instead of in plain language? 
Why will he not speak in a manner that they will understand? He said, he will speak so that some people will be confused. In fact, everybody will be confused. It's another mystery, isn't it? Amen. Why will he preach? Go. The purpose he came was to save lives. And now, here is it to save life. Crowd to gather and then you'll be talking to them in parables. I saw in verse 10, Matthew 13. Verse 9 say, after he spoke the, the parable, he added in verse 9. Who had ears to hear? Let him hear. Because he knows say, I speak out and I'm not going to ever understand. Who has ear to hear? Is there anyone in there? There was no one in there. He was not one. He was bringing out a revelation. A mystery of the kingdom. But because everybody should not understand. Then when the disciples now we are alone with him. Crusade is over. The revival is over. Because when they are alone. The narration in Mark chapter 4. Says when they are alone with him. He then expound the scripture to them. So, the crusade is over. He left all the crowd to go with their own interpretation of what those parables say. And every one of them will have their own interpretation to carry to their denominations. And every denomination that exists today, today have their various interpretations of those parables. Amen. And then, the disciples say, why do you speak to them? Because it's a mystery now. A master, tell us. He said, unto you, who are my disciples? Inner circle, inner caucus. Are they here today? Are they here today? There is a difference between a wife and a girlfriend. I have been saying it. There is a difference between a wife and a concubine. The things that the husband will tell the wife, he will not tell the girlfriend. Hallelujah. And remember that the girlfriend is not interested in knowing any secrets of the man. Because he knows, she knows that she has no inheritance in that place. So, all that she is attached to that man for is for the gifts. It's for the gifts. It's for the gifts. It's for the gifts. It's for the gifts. Oh, oh. Hey. In Genesis 25, therefore, a type of the two groups of people in the church. Abraham was to die. He had a child of promise, Isaac. Hallelujah. And he had other children from Keturah, concubines. There was the child of his dear wife, Sarah. What's his name? Isaac. And there is Listen, church, this is important. I'm introducing this topic. I want you to catch the background, the foundation of what we want to say very seriously. And Abraham, a type of God, the father, called these two children is about to die. The two groups of people. The Bible, in Genesis 25, you read it from verse 1 there. It says that he called all of them and the children of the concubine, what did he give them? Gifts. He gave them what? Gifts. See gifts in the concubine denominations. Gifts everywhere. And they know nothing beyond those gifts. That is why I tell entire message believers and preachers. Stop calling them. The anointing going on there. That it is of the devil. It's not of the devil. It's genuine gift of the Holy Ghost. Unless you know those who are using juju among them. But the generality of them. They are gifts, genuine gifts from God. It's another mystery. Praise the Lord. He gave the children of the concubine. He called them concubine, not wife. And to the promised child, Isaac, the Bible says, he gave all. The emphasis there, all, that is, he gave gifts. Plus other things that those children of the concubines did not have. 
and the effect or the evidence is what happens in the next chapter chapter 26 where you saw Isaac immediately Abraham that he received certain revelations he went back to Gera back to go and looked for the wells that were dug by Abraham the Bible says that after Abraham died the Philistines went to those wells and stopped them with it. Oh, that's a sermon. While men slept after the apostles who had the original living water, the word, all the doctrines that pertain to salvation the denominational antichrist system came with earthly wisdom earthly ideas and covered all the doctrines in the bible that were delivered to us by our apostolic fathers but Isaac went back there he did not go to another land to dig another well he went to the same spot This is how they baptized. He went there. How did the fathers baptize? They baptized in the name of Jesus. They came back to the apostolic faith. Baptizing in the name of Jesus. The fathers did not ordain women pastors. We will not ordain the women pastors. They did not have all those apostles. Paul, our apostle, did not have any other title other than the apostle. Therefore, we shall not be a reverend, reverend doctor, act and low and senior and junior bishop. His eminence, his preeminence, reverend doctor, general overseer, general superintendent, prelate and primate. His holiness, his grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. No, 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 no. Genuine gifts of the Holy Ghost. Allowing the freedom of the Spirit of God. Not the one man show. Not the family business. Man and woman owning a church. Not Isaac. Isaac had something that those Keturah children didn't hear. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. It's a mystery. He said unto you. Verse 10, verse 11. He answered and said unto them. Because it is given unto you. You the disciples. You the bride of Jesus Christ. To know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. The day I read this scripture, fear came upon me. Let me continue it. Amen. Verse 12. For whosoever hath to him shall be given. Praise the Lord. And he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away even that he hath. Therefore speak I to them in parables. Because they see, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the promise, the prophecy of Isaiah. We say, by hearing ye shall hear, and shall not understand. And see ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is wax gross, according to the prophecy. And their eyes are dull of hearing. And their eyes, they have closed. Let's see where we're going. At any time, they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them so that their sins will not be forgiven that is why he closed their eyes until today there are people that are holding bible and saying they are Christians but they are as blind as a bat as far as the program of salvation is concerned praise the Lord 
Verse 34. Verse 34. All these things spake Jesus unto the multitude in parables. And without the parables spake he not unto them that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet saying I will open my mouth in parables I will utter things which have been kept secret from the foundation of the world. Including serpent seed doctrine. Including the revelation of the Godhead. It's a mystery. Including the mystery of the anointing that is going on in the church of Jesus Christ now. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. When Jesus Christ said the first shall be the last and the last shall be the first, he didn't explain what it meant. The first is the Jews, Israel. The first child of God on earth here is Israel. But concerning salvation, the second child, the Gentile church, will enter the kingdom first before the first child. The first shall be the last to come in. Salvation will go to them again only after the rapture has taken place. It's a mystery. The whole process of the rapture is in the Bible, but it's a mystery. When some people will tell you that on the day of the rapture, you will hear pa 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 pa. Then confusion will be everywhere. Hey, kitty, 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 kitty. Train will jump, train, aeroplane will jump, aeroplane. Molue will jump, Molue. Keke will jump, Keke. Okada will jump, Okada. Everybody in the market, confusion. What is happening? Yeah, that, that, didn't do ya, that, 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 that. Nothing like that will happen. It's a mystery. The whole book of Revelation is a book of mystery. There's nothing there that is plain. Every verse in the book of Revelation, every line in the book of Revelation needs revelation from God. You will never understand. Thank God for Pastor Thomas that is using the vigil now. He has started line by line from chapter 1 verse 1. Amen. Praise the Lord. <laughs> From chapter 1 verse 1. Every line needs explanation. You will never understand it. Unless God opens your eyes. But he has opened our eyes. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Every time for God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. There's a church that is going for crusade. Every time. Crusade here. Crusade here. Crusade here. Crusade here. Every week we crusade the song we are. Every week we crusade. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And there are members that are in that church and they know nothing beyond their church. Their church. Their church. Their church. Their pastor. Their church. Their pastor. Until they have idolized their church. Until they believe that salvation even comes by their church. Oh, you see why every day I, I just thank God uh, what did I do to deserve this election by God nothing nothing and I'm not saying this to feel more special than them no it can, I can only feel special if there's something I did to receive this revelation I didn't do anything I just sit down JJ it's a prison yeah now he tapped me now you are getting interested. I want you to know the mystery of redemption. I don't want you to go the way of others. I don't want you to be a religious person. He loaded me and loaded me and loaded me until when I came out. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, please, and those of you who are members of Pride Assembly, the bride of Jesus Christ worldwide. Our identity is not the gifts. Our identity is the knowledge of the world. Give them brother, give them sister. Thank God for that gift. We love it. But remember, 
Isaac was not given only gifts. He was given all. You are not qualified to say you are a minister of the gospel under the bride movement until you can stand and open this Bible from Genesis to Revelation. That is what makes us different from them. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. That is why Apostle Paul, Peter, now let's go to Peter, First Peter chapter 2. This is the way Peter put it. And that you're under the token, Peteru. Peteru. <laughs> First Peter chapter 2. This is the way Apostle Peter put it. To the church. And I'm saying also to this church. The first three verses there. Wherefore, this is the way he put it. He said, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings. He said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. If so be, you have tested that the Lord is gracious. You don't grow by an anointing in your Christian faith to perfection. Anointing does not perfect you. Your gift does not perfect you. It is the word that gives you muscles of faith. The effort some of you give to your gift to get it sharper and sharper. I love it. But give the same diligence to studying the word. So that you will grow thereby. Even if you have tested that the Lord is gracious. You are partaker of his grace. Hebrew. Let's go to Hebrew. Chapter 5. Hebrew chapter 5. Verse 11 up to verse 14. This is the way he put it. Remember, he has been talking about the priesthood of Christ in the order of Melchizedek, right from verse, right from the first verse uh, there of chapter 5. Comparing the ironic priesthood with the priesthood of Christ Jesus, which comes after the order of Melchizedek. And verse 9, it says, And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him, called of God and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Now where I am going is, Of whom we have many things to say concerning that Jesus, and had to be uttered. See, you are dull of a hearing. For when, for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again. Some of you in this ministry for five years, six years. Five years, six years. The shame. How can you say you are a medical doctor and you don't know about the anatomy of a human being? How can you say you are a pastor and you know nothing about the gospel of salvation? Which book which book now is your book? How can you say you are a lawyer and you don't know the simple things about the Nigerian criminal system or whatever field you claim to specialize in? I say you are a lawyer. You are a medical doctor. You are a preacher. You are a pastor. When they come say, uh, my own is, my look, my own is just to see vision. If you want to know about water baptism, go and meet Festus. It's a shame. A big shame. Lie, lie. When I gave my life to Christ, the first thing that came to me was, I wanted to know who that Jesus is. Any other thing is secondary. And that is exactly what happens if you have a genuine experience with God. You want to know about that God. It's true. And so 
somebody thinks he, ha he lays claim to go and start a church because he sees vision. Because he prophesied. Therefore, he's a pastor prophet to somebody. Or like one of the ministers that left here is now in Ajawa estate. He's employing pastor. Then he is the prophet and the Jew. Then he looked for one dead enter message frustrated minister and promised him he will pay him and employed him to be the pastor, the preacher, while he is the prophet and general overseer. Shame on the two of them there. Shame, oh, shame on the two of you there. Because you saw the light. But you are so blinded by your insatiable desire to make money. That's the only reason. Do you think that prophet start that church so that he will win souls for Christ? No. And there are ministers in this church that they are waiting for somebody like that to employ them. Man must work. Hey, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But everybody will go the way it's written of him. And it's very easy to know them. They're not interested in Bible study. If you are here and it is time for prophetic ministration, sleep will not catch you. But as soon as we start to preach, sleep is catching you. Can I tell you who you are? You are a pair. It is evidence that what we are saying here, you are not ordained for it. Oh, look, a young woman that is a, a you know, you know, a spouse engaged to a man for marriage. Eh? And then opportunity to know about the man she's going to live forever with. We come and she's not interested. It means she does not desire to live long in that relationship. So she's only interested to know whether the man get money. Uh, you get money. Uh, that's all now. Which village you come from? Me, I don't know. Where did they work? I'm not sure, but I know say you get money. How can you be a Christian and not be interested in knowing about Christ? Anytime it is time for the preaching of the word, that is when you switch off, waiting for the time for power. Hey, who are you? Ask your neighbor. Now you then they talk to. Can I go? Hallelujah. I am still introducing the topic. I never reached there yet. Too. Verse 11. Verse 12. Hebrew chapter 5. For when the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and have become such as have need of milk, and not of strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. As your neighbor, are you a baby? Baby Christian. Baby Christian. Verse 14. But strong meat. Somebody shout strong meat. Shout very well. He said, but strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. And the only way you can discern both good and evil 
It's what Timothy said in verse 15, 2 Timothy chapter 2. He says, study to show thyself approved of God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing the word of truth. Praise the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And when we talk about the divine agenda, I believe with the whole of my heart, remember that the letters that Apostle Paul wrote, God, in his wisdom, he allowed Apostle Paul to be kept in prison. Or conditions arose that the only way he could send his message across to a church was for him to write letters. All things work together for good. Amen. You see? So, 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 I believe that concerning everything we are teaching now, Apostle Paul taught his church. So, the only things we have on record are those letters that he wrote. But they are enough to perfect us. God made sure they were enough to perfect us. And so there's something he told the Thessalonians, First Thessalonians chapter 5. That's why I say what I'm saying. From what he said there, chapter 5, verse 1. Let me read it up to verse 5. He said to them, he said, But of the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you. Which time and which season? It's the divine agenda. It's a divine timetable. The season of the coming of the Lord. Because that was the expectation of the church at that time. They were, because of the teachings they had, they believed that Christ would come at their time. Until maybe some of them stopped going to work. Some of them stopped going to school. Some of them stopped getting married. Because there was a sudden awareness from the teaching they received. And that is what gave birth to Second Thessalonians, the second letter that he had to write to them from chapter 2, where he said that they should not be so, so shaken, they should not be disturbed, either by word from them or by letters that concerning the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he told them that yes, Christ will come up, but before he comes, watch out for this there will come a falling away first. And the man of sin be revealed. So he told them, relax your mind. Christ will come. But there are things we should watch out for. That's why he told the Thessalonians here, the times and the season, you have no need that are right unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord shall come as a thief in the night. So he taught them. He taught them. He taught them. Meanwhile, our denominations are saying he will come. Ba, 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 te, 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 ba, ba, confusion. Ba, 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 ba. But Apostle Paul said he will come as a thief in the night. And when a thief comes in the night and thief your property, you only realize a thief came when you wake up in the morning and discover your property is gone. The rapture will take place and the world will not know it. For when they shall say peace, and safety, United Nation. Then sudden destruction coming upon them as travel upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye brethren are not in darkness, are we? Are we? That the day should overtake you as a thief. That's what Apostle Paul. Before you say we are not in darkness, you must do what Apostle Peter said: be diligent. To make your calling and election sure. You who say you are not in darkness. And yet you are living a very wretched life. That portrays everything. But one ready to go in the rapture. Verse 5. Ye are all the children of light. And the children of the day. We are not of the night. Nor of darkness concerning what God is doing 
concerning the plan for God's salvation for mankind, the light of the word of God has been shown to us in this age. We are not in the denominational darkness. We are not just religious Christians, but revelated Christians. And we can be likened to Daniel in the book of Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9. This is how it went. Verse 1 and verse 2. My emphasis is in verse 2. In the first year of Darius, the son of Ashus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans, in the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by what? Somebody shout books. Say it now. That means he was studying something that had been written that should be a guide. Understood by books the number of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he will accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. My emphasis there is that he understood by books. It means he was studying. What was he studying? They were in captivity. Jeremiah had prophesied. I think somewhere Jeremiah chapter 25. He, Jeremiah prophesied and it came to pass. And the Babylonian Empire, Nebuchadnezzar came and packed all of them. He took captivity. And the, the prophecy said they will be in that captivity for 70 years. And suddenly they were there. The Babylonian Empire passed. They were still there in that captivity. The patients the Medopatians, they came, they took over from there, captivity continues, but suddenly there was an awakening. Daniel began to think, Kobo, there is something that happened oh. as at that time, when they came into captivity, Daniel was very young was a small boy when they came and held them into captivity. Of course, that's why they didn't kill somebody like him. But suddenly, he decided, come on, this thing that kept us in captivity, there was a prophecy concerning it and began to search the books. As at the time of this revelation, Daniel chapter 9, he found out that it was 70 years that was prophesied. And from the time that Nebuchadnezzar came and caught them and took them away into captivity to that period that he was investigating, he found out that they had spent 68 years. How many more years to go? Two years. And that is the purpose for this study. That is the purpose for this study. Israel. Salvation was for Israel. They rejected Christ. That is why God blinded their eyes. Romans chapter 11 verse 25 or so. He said blindness in part has come upon Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. Acts chapter 13, Apostle Paul told them when they were stoning them up and down, when they were going to the cities and preaching Christ, when they go, there's revival, the Jews will come and scatter it, persecute them. He turned and looked at them. Can we open it? 
Acts chapter 13. Verse 44. And the next Sabbath day came also the whole city together to hear the word of God. But when they chose to saw the multitude, they were filled with envy and spoke against those things which were spoken by Paul, contradicting and blaspheming. Then Paul and Barnabas waxed bold and said, It was necessary that the word of God should first have been spoken to you, you the Jews. But see, you put it from you and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life. Lo, we turn to the Gentiles. From that time, Apostle Paul took the light and faced the Gentiles. That is how the gospel came to us. And the Jews, their eyes were blinded. And part of it, in 1870, General Titus from Rome came and scattered them. Broke down the temple. Destroyed the city walls. Left that place waste. Scattered them in Europe and other parts of the world. Until 1948. The gospel moves to the Gentiles. That is how we, that Jesus himself, say we are dogs. We became precious in the sight of God. Now the question is, how long because, hallelujah, he, Apostle Paul said, it is blindness in part. Because he ended by saying, so all Israel shall be saved. The gospel is supposed to go back to them again. But how long will it be with us? Daniel is a type of the bride of Jesus Christ. That we begin to look at scriptures and look and we discover that there is a program of God step by step, step by step and it is there in the Bible and there are calculations we shall make in the scriptures that we tell you according to the prophecy Daniel discovered two more years that we too, we can look at the scripture and make our calculation and see how many more years left for grace to be over it's in the Bible Hypertension, diabetes, ulcer, cancer, HIV, AIDS, cough, chest problem is over in the name of Jesus. I declare this water hormonal drug in the name of Jesus. I declare this water the medicine of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. At the seasons. What does this teaching produce? It makes us to be better Christians. It makes us to take a stand against worldliness and take a stand for Jesus, for righteousness. It makes you to be a different type of Christian. You become so odd and they don't know why you are a different type of Christian than the rest. There's something you know. That will make you stand out. Make you stand out. I agree with just ordinary drop your ring. Drop your trouser. Stop painting. Don't dress like a person. You are arguing. It's because you have no foot anywhere in revelation wise. 
you become so dead to the world so dead because the rapturing faith ignites in you that is the purpose and that's why from now we'll be looking at the divine agenda so that it will help us position ourselves for the second coming of the Lord the coming of the Lord will never take the bride by surprise who it will it will take us by surprise if it is possible for a young girl that is a bride not to know the day of her wedding if it is possible then we too we will not know when Christ will come it is that revelation that we remain unshakable even if suddenly we see this sun stop shining now all of a sudden God's blah, sun no shine again we will still be relaxed we know it has nothing to do with the coming of Jesus do you understand because 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 we know step by step what next after this what next after this what next if this one is not fulfilled this one cannot fulfill that is what revelation does i told you some time ago and for 20 years before i had a child and then one day i was praying and the lord gave me a vision and i turned to see a child sitting down at the back of my bed i turned and i looked at him i could describe him as a baby boy just managing to sit black in complexion go up my hair like my own i discovered it was a revelation i told my wife that god is going to give us a baby boy he has showed me i'm no more praying i'll just be thanking him now why i'm saying this is this that child didn't come until eight years after but you know what? Anytime I am anywhere, whether on the aircraft, and I jam turbulence, kitty, 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 and people are afraid, I will remain kakaraka, I can't die. Why? My picking never come. That is what the impact of revelation does hallelujah i remain on sh i say lie lie one time i didn't know whether the aircraft was upside down or like this everybody was shaking i never i was appeasing the people by my side take it easy nothing will happen nothing will happen nothing will. why was i saying not when i stepped down one of them came say i know i believe you're a man of god that time i know be pastor for this church i, I know you're a man of god uh, i know you're a man of god I said, not be man of God. You will not understand. Man of God, not a fear death. All of us will be human beings. But there is something that made me not to be afraid. It was a revelation. If that child has not come, I cannot die. It is something with you. There are certain things God has showed you that you are watching. Any other thing happening, you say, a lie. This one never happened. Oh, let's clap our hands for Jesus. That's what Revelation does. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. What this does, this revelation, what it does is it makes you, gets you focused. It directs your attention points you to the right direction of faith. It makes you see the need to prepare yourself. You get to know the reality of a program that will certainly come to an end. And it makes you to see where you are now in that agenda. We will know at what point of the agenda we are in now. So that you have a reason to thank God. That you are not just a religious Christian. 
You are not going to church because today is Sunday. You are not living a righteous life because you don't want to go to hell. It's more than that. Praise the Lord. And when we talk about the timetable, a lot of the common thing we hear, the commonest thing we hear these days, what do we hear? The end time. The end time. The end time. So everybody knows that time is allotted to man. They know that something is about to happen on earth. We are the end time. Yes, end time of what? Three things. Number one, the end of the rule of Satan on earth. We are coming to the end. He has been the one ruling from the Garden of Eden. The fall of man. He took over the rulership of the earth. But he's not going to rule forever. His end is soon coming. Secondly, the end of world government and systems. The government rulership of man on earth here. Their systems, their economic systems. They are the governments generally, the systems they have established, they are all coming to an end. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It's true. And why do they would why are we sure like that? Because in Daniel chapter 2, Nebuchadnezzar saw a dream. And it's through that dream and the interpretation by Daniel of that dream in Daniel chapter 2 that we are sure the end of man and his activities and government on earth here is coming to an end and very soon hallelujah theocracy will take over the rulership of this earth by God himself who will come through Christ ruling with kings you and I and him as the king of kings. Wherein righteousness will be established on earth here. Because we are in the last part of the interpretation of that dream. And that is the Roman Empire. Number three. The end of what? Is the end also of God's program to restore the earth. His program to restore the earth. He fell apart, and since he fell apart, he has been in the business, in the process of restoring it. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I also want you to note, quickly, the interesting thing about this God. The interesting thing about this God. It will look as if the condition that we are on earth here took God by surprise. It will look as if when he created man, he did not know when he was creating the serpent that serpent would be used to spoil the program. It looks as if that's what it is. And that assertion is even, is, is even uh, uh, confirmed by, uh, established by the statement that God made in the days of Noah that I regret creating man. So it make it look as if it was it was it was ah if God had known that serpent will do this thing ah he for not create a serpent that's another mystery that's another mystery did he know did he know yesterday excitingly I was sharing with my wife and also pastor Thomas, I mean Francis, the day this scripture was quickened to me. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. See the way he put it. Let me read it from, let's just get a picture because Apostle Paul was too deep in his revelations. Too deep. From verse 18. Let me read it from verse 18. Are we there? He said, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, all this wahala we are into, are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. 
for the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. And that will take place in the millennium after the rapture when we shall come back to take over the earth with Christ to rule. That is when they will know that the children of God are on earth. Verse 20. For the creature are we there? Was made. That is where I am going. The creature was made subject to vanity. Not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same to hope. The day this verse was quickened to me. I found myself jumped up and I was shouting alone in my room. How mysterious this God is. When the Bible says he God created us for his pleasure. When the Bible refers to us as the clay and he is the potter. And he can decide to mold you anyhow he desires to. Hear what Apostle Paul so deep in that revelation. What he's saying there in verse 20. The creature, everything that was created, including you and me, we we are created, we we are made subject to vanity. Vanity there is that. In short, what that scripture is trying to say is that God created us with the intention for us to fall. Do you understand what I'm saying? God created us so that we will fall. He designed us to fall. Oh. God designed us to fall. And see the way he ended that statement. He said, but he didn't do it. He said, he said not willingly. He said, but by reason of him, God, who has subjected the creature, the same, to hope. So, from the Garden of Eden, Man was always looking forward to redemption. There was always a hope that this problem we are into, something, you know, making us to desire something. Something is happening. We should not be in this estate. We should not be in this estate. He said the endless expectation of the creature. Every creature, they are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Even animals, even plants, plantations, forests, everything is now in confusion. There is everything in us. There is hope. He subjected us. The reason, hope, 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 hope. Every creature. There is, see, see, there is, there is no settlement anywhere. The billionaire is not settled. The rich men and women are not settled. There is no peace anywhere on earth. But God himself designed it to happen like that. That is why he allowed his children to fall in the garden of Eden. He designed them to fall. If it is only Adam, he will not have fallen. To make the man fall, he brought a part of him out. The woman. The woman was not in the original. It was when God decided that the man should not be alone. He brought her out of him. And that is why Satan, the serpent did not go to the man. That's why he went to the woman. The composition of the woman was designed for her to fall. God himself designed it like that. For a purpose. We will continue next Sunday. Can we stand up? My father and my God. You own my last breath. You have the final say over my life. That's why I must worship you, Papa. I 
I must worship you because before the foundation of the you put my name in the book of life. I must worship you for the sacrifice you offered for me, Lord. I worship you. Chapter 19. Hallelujah. Verse 6, 7, 8 says, The bride has made herself.